Hey there, listeners. There are very few people that I meet that I think are like genuinely nice people. Yes, there are people that are like nice when you meet them. They're relatively decent people, but you know, we're all kind of assholes too. And I'm including myself into that list. But Laura, the person I'm talking to today, is really a genuinely kind person. And you'll hear it throughout the conversation of like some of the stuff that she does. And she like, You can tell that she like wants to help people and wants to do good things in this world, which is very nice and refreshing. So I'm not going to do a long introduction this time around. I'll more or less just jump right into the interview with her. I will say though, if you notice, if you've been listening, I did change the intro music, although I probably should have waited till after this episode because the previous intro music kind of had a Latin flair to it and Laura's from Argentina to whereas this one does not. Let me know what you think of it. Uh, Obviously, I'm going off what I can get for via cheap because I don't have any money to hire somebody to do a custom theme song for me, which would be great. So if you do custom theme songs, let me know. I'd love to have one. Uh, But keep in mind, the best I can offer is a shout out on the show. If you do want to contact me and let me know what you think of the show, or if you have a custom theme song that you'd like to provide me with, you can always reach me through No Budget, which is at No Budget Show via the social medias. That's N O B U D G E T S H O W. Just let them know it's for me. I'm usually the one who's checking most of the social medias via No Budget, anyways. But even if it, I'm not the one who sees it, the person who does see it will make sure that any messages get over to me. That's it for now. Let's get on to the interview. Welcome to Diary of an Unemployed Actor with me, Milo Dennison. Today, I am joined by the wonderful Laura Mobilia. Is that, did I pronounce that correctly? Mobilia. It's Mobilia. Mobilia. Mobilia, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yes. It's the the, 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 at the the end. Yeah. Mobilia. That sounds, that has kind of an Italian ring. When I, when I hear Italian, it has. It's Italian. It's Italian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Italian. Oh, yeah. so even yeah, yeah, though you're yeah. from Argentina, you have an Italian last name. Your parents are Italian? Or? Because my father is Italian. He's from Sicily. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it, it's an Italian last name. Most of the people in Argentina have Italian surnames. But mine, there are some, some last names are more Italian than others. And mine is, is like really sounds Italian. Yeah. Does it have, is there a large Italian population then because I've, I've been to argentina yeah. that we've talked about yeah. this and yeah. i remember one day we went out to lunch and i ordered uh like a pasta dish and it was awful it it was like it had some pasta in it and then it was just kind of buried in um in an awful marinara sauce oh, no. and uh i don't want to um, talk a, a specific product because then they might sue me on this but like have you ever heard of a chef boyardee they make these kind of like canned pastas with you know sauces in them yeah yeah and, and they're not very good uh, sorry chef boyardee fans uh but you know a, a true italian would would kind of you know roll their face up at, at these and so I, it tasted to me like they just took a can of pasta yeah. sauce and noodles and, and served it up to me and uh-huh. it's it really quite awful yeah, Argentinian food is, is I, I would say that 60, 70% is Italian. Oh, wow. So everything, I'm, I, I would say half of the country are Italian. They come from Italian. Okay. Um, either their parents or grandparents. Or, and then the other half Spain, but I, I think it's more more Italian. And okay. If you go to Italy and Argentina, it's very similar in many things. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it was just that one place because the rest of the time I was there, the food I had was lovely. Like I love barbecue and yes. uh, all that kind of stuff. It was fantastic, and of course That's I love good best. wine, Argentinian wine. And yeah, and what was great is you you can buy a, a, a you know when you go out to lunch or dinner, you get just the whole bottle because it was because of the price difference between yeah. the U.S. or here in Europe, and it was it, the bottle of wine was roughly like five dollars or five pounds, and it's a 
great and beautiful bottle of wine. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yes, yes, it's the best. It's the best. Yeah, the food and the barbecues and the wine are. Mm -hmm. I really like it. Yes. Yeah. So anyone listening, go to Argentina. It's wonderful. <laughs> But don't get scarlet fever like I did when I was down there. No. But other than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry that happened to you. That was terrible. It was my own fault, though. Uh, I didn't plan for the Argentinian winter. I thought it would be a little bit warmer in the winters there. Well, um, here I'm always cold. I don't think it, it here is cold. Um, Argentina is cold as here. But, yeah, the, sun, the winter in Buenos Aires, especially, uh, it's, it's very cool. Yeah, it was surprising. So what brought you to London? Um, okay, so I came last year. On the 28th of June, I arrived in London. And I came just for one month, just as a tourist, to practice English and to experience what it's like to live in London. Um, and then while I was staying here, I got offered an internship for one year to do social work with homeless people, um, mainly homeless and people with alcohol addictions and all kinds of social work to work at night shelters and, and places, clubs where we give homeless food. So it's really nice. It was really nice and it was something very different than what I ever done. Um, so it was great. So I thought about it and I said, okay, yes, one year in London, having the experience of improving my English and, and meeting people and meeting British and people from all cultures, because mm -hmm. they are not only British here. So um, it was great. And now I would say, I think that seven, seven months, um, I've been here for se seven months already, yes? And then I'm going back on the 29th of August, and then I'll, I'll, I'll see what happens. I really don't know what, what I'll do next, but I know that I'm going back. And so I'm trying to enjoy my time in London here, the, the, the five months I still have. Oh, that's great. So how have you found, uh, did you study acting? Actually, just a quick question. Yes. You did study theater, or theater, yes. acting, like what was your studies? Yes, um, so I went to a university in Buenos Aires. I went to drama school. Um, so I, I have a degree, a master in performing arts, particularly in acting. So I studied acting in, in, in university and also since I was a child, I went to um, drama classes and, and musical comedies. And I studied singing also and dancing. And so then I'm from a city that's called Rosario, which is near Buenos Aires. And I moved to Buenos Aires to go to uni and study acting and work in there as an actress. And I, I ended up there for 12 years, uh, living there. So, so it, was, it was good and, and I gained some experience, some acting experience, which I needed a lot. And in my city, it's, it's a smaller city, so I didn't have that possibilities as in the capital. So so for me it was it was great. And then I think in London it's it's very different, but also I see that there are a lot of actors looking for jobs, just like in my country. In a way I thought it was different, but I feel like it's it's the same in a way. Yeah, it seems universal wherever you are, there's plenty of actors <laughs> trying to find yeah. acting work. Yeah. How have you, so when you moved here, because you moved here mostly to kind of have have the experience of learning English and stuff, did yes. you, um, how, how have you found finding acting work? Like, did you start looking for work right away when you got here and just, you know, hey, I'm going to do a little this and this on the side? How did you find that? Well, no, no. I mean, everything that happened to me in London was something like, I would say, in a way, uh, things that I I wasn't looking for like this internship that I'm doing. And then the first thing, the first acting job, well, not actually a job because it, it, wasn't, it wasn't paid, but it was a good experience. I, um, I remember that one day I went to a guild hall school of music and drama to just to do a class, a free class. And 
And I, I was thinking it would be good to do some acting here because I'm leaving everything for one year. I was doing some acting job in back uh, in Argentina. So um, I went just to take a class. And while I was there, I saw that there was a, like a poster that they were saying audition and I sent an, a, my CV and they replied to me that they were looking for actors for a play courses from students of the university. So um, they cast me and I started to research for a play that actually it was, it was going to happen on the 8th of April, but everything was canceled now. So, but it, but it was really nice to, to rehearse and yeah, just to meet people that are trying to, you know, live as actors. And, and so it was, it was really nice. With your play, so there was, was the character a Spanish speaking character? No, no, that was, that was very interesting because first when I was there, when I started to rehearse, I was thinking, oh no, with my accent, what am I going to do? Uh, um, I thought that they were going to give me a character that says Spanish or, or French or Italian or something like that. Um, and then, no, they just gave me three different, it was really fun because they gave me three different roles and none of them was, was uh, Spanish or none of them said where they were from. So I'm really thankful for the, the people that cast me, the, the director and the author because um, there wasn't any moment that they told me, okay, we're going to uh, let people know that this character from, comes from yeah, Spain or any other country. Um, so it was, it was really nice. So I ended up rehearsing for three roles and, and well, then everything was canceled, but it was a it great canceled, experience. Yeah. It was a great experience, yeah. Are they planning to potentially uh, put it back on once everything opens back up while well, you might be gone by then yeah 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 exactly so I, I really don't know because the idea was to do it in the summer but i hope that if they really do it in the summer that they do it before i leave so um yeah i, I don't know what can happen i'm just i trying to take the, the the good thing that it was rehearsing with british actors and and in london and, and in a really nice place so do you have a preference between film acting or stage acting? Well, I think that uh, filmmaking is, is great. Um, it's great because uh, it's, it's so different, you know, the, the, the way that we can um, perform. And also, of course, it's very different because in filmmaking, we can get to all over the world. Let's say if I'm acting here and doing something here, I can send it to my friends and my family in Argentina, so it would be great because they could watch it. But um, I really enjoy acting uh, for theater. I mean, I, I, I had the chance to work for 10 years in the national radio doing radio dramas. Um, I don't know how you call it, it's radio plays, radio drama, radio acting. I think it's kind of the same thing, radio drama. That's interesting. So uh, how did you find out about that and do that because that's not it's not a real popular genre there's not a lot of people that do yeah. that kind of stuff so tell me about that that's fascinating. well that was great that was great that was in my country so it was in the national argentinian radio um and it was great because um i remember that also i was in buenos aires and one day there was a really big audition for everyone in the national channel um, so I went there, I remember I went there and the audition was over because I didn't know the city that well and I was confused with the bus that I took and, and everything. So then I took a wrong bus and I went to the national radio, I ended up there um, and I found out that there was a show that is the oldest uh, job, uh, sorry, show, show <laughs> radio program and that's been on the radio for more than 70 years. And so I gave my CV and they cast me and I ended up working for 10 years there. So and I'm at, at, to interrupt there for just a second. Yes. So you heard about one audition. 
Yeah. But you weren't able to go in for that because you got there late. And then you just decided, yeah. hey, I'm going to go over here to this other place and give them my CV? No, it actually it was a mistake because I didn't know the city. So I, I took the wrong bus. So I was late um, when I got to the channel and the audition was over. So I was feeling very sad and I said, okay, I'm going back home. And then I was confused again and I took another wrong bus. And I, the bus took me to the national radio. I mean, the, so the just you just there. randomly, so you were just <laughs> randomly unintentionally got on the wrong bus yeah. that took you to another yeah. place yeah. to do that exact same thing that you were intending to do in the first place. Exactly, exactly. So, so that was also a thing that I say. I mean, sometimes we think in in life that. Okay, if I don't make it in this audition, then everything is over. You know, as an actor, uh, I'm sure you understand me. Or, or if I lost uh, this opportunity, but yes, so I got to the radio and the bus finished there. That was the last stop. So I got off the bus and I was and I saw, oh, here's the national radio. I didn't know this place, and um, so I went in. And I remember there was someone at the reception and I told her, I'm an actress, is there a possibility to do some acting job here in, in any program in the radio? And she told me, oh yeah, there's a program that's been here for more than 60 years. Um, they do, every week they do a different play, you know, like um, we perform Shakespeare, Moliere, Chekhov, every author, international author. And I didn't know about it. So I gave my CV and they called me for an audition and I ended up working for 10 years. So it was, it was great. It was great. So that was really, um, we did it live. So that was, um, I would say like acting on a theater. Yeah, that's the great. Same experience. So I, I'm more, I, I would say the theater is more me. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but um, I really enjoy it. Yeah, no, I, I'm the same way. I, if I had to choose between the two, I think there's something about the stage experience that yeah. is more impactful. And even just the whole process of the rehearsing to the performances and that type of stuff to where on camera, it's just you kind of show up, do your bit and leave. Uh, so it's diff very different. Yeah. Uh, when you did that radio show, you mentioned Shakespeare and other stuff. Did Was that translated into Spanish or did you do it in English? No, 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 it was in Spanish, in, okay. in Spanish and in Argentinian Spanish, which is not the same as Spain or, or maybe another Latin country like Mexico or Colombia. Or, um, so actually the actors had to be Argentinian because it was the Argentinian radio. So we had to do different Argentinian accents from different parts of the country, uh, sometimes the countryside or then the city. Um, I don't know, I, I heard the word posh here. So we had to do the Argentinian posh uh, sometimes. Um, oh, really? So with the accents there, it's like here where you've kind of got your posh British accent yeah. versus yeah. your just kind of city British accent or whatever? <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's the same thing. Um, and then the countryside and then the people from the north and the south. Um, so we specialize in accents, in Spanish accents. And sometimes we have to do an Italian Spanish accent or maybe Spanish Spanish from Spain accent. So so I mean to learn accents it was great. Um, yeah, so it was a, a really really good experience and also a good training, yeah. acting training. Experience. Oh, I'd really imagine great. especially for voice training. Yes, fantastic. Yes. Did you? So why did you stop doing that? Well, I stopped doing that because I came to London. Oh, okay. So, Are you going to yeah. go do it when you move back? Are you planning on going back there? Well, it's a possibility that, that I know that the, the doors are open for me because I have a very good relationship with the directors and the producers. Um, and so they gave me, they were really nice when I told them that I wanted to go to London for one year. Well, at first I went for one month and then and I told them I'm going to stay for one year. So they were really nice. Um, so it's a possibility that I, that I can go back there. But I don't know yet because that's in Buenos Aires. So maybe I'll go to my city again, which is Rosario. And if I go there, 
I won't be able to work in Buenos Aires. Uh, that's something that I have to decide yet. So um, I'm curious about your uh, show, The Galaxy of Dreams, La Galicia de los Suenos. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, well, that, that was a, a show that now is a television show, but it started as a play that I wrote uh, a few years ago. And we performed in different theaters in Buenos Aires. And, and we were also with the government because the play uh, was giving like good messages speaking about um, dreams and, you know, friendship and love. And, um, so then after that, a few years later, I work with a, a good, a really good um, screen uh, writer. I, I don't know the word, um, but someone that wrote uh, the script for television. Mm -hmm. Yeah, script writer, um, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so we did it for television and it was great. We had a great experience. We started to film in 2015 and then 2016. So now everything is filmed. And the show is being is being yeah shown in my city and and also it's been all over the country. So it was a great experience and we won three awards. So how did you I'm curious, so you produced the show, wrote wrote and produced the show. How did yeah. you get it distributed to like to 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 get it broadcast? Did you just take it around on a disc and show it to studios yeah. is that was the, oh really exactly i did that i did that literally um well in the in the studios that i could go studios in buenos aires uh, which was where i live at the moment or studios in my city i just went directly to the to the main you know the, the manager and yeah i just took them in person literally <laughs> that's fantastic and when it's interesting yeah. that they let you do that because i would i would think you know, if I'm going to walk into a place, it just same with your story about getting the radio show. If I walk yeah. into a place with my CV or a DVD <laughs> of something I've done, they'd be like, yeah, yeah, get the hell out of here. And so it's really fascinating that you actually yeah. did that and were successful at doing that. That's yes, cool. yes. That, that was great. That was great because at first we did the, uh, we filmed the pilot and we didn't know how it was going to be. So after that, I mean, it was really good. The first show was really good because we did it. actually we hired a studio everything so professional and we had all the actors and everything so it was really nice and then um after that yeah i just literally went to the studios and in some other cities which were further uh from where i live then i i just spoke through email and i told them literally i have a tv show and i show it to you so i send them the file and they yeah, the link and they watch it. Yeah, and it, it, it's a children's show because I watched the I watched the promotional video, mm -hmm. uh, and it's 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 you and other people kind of singing and dancing and, and yeah. like and you used a green screen and doing all this stuff. So it exactly. I can't understand it because my high school Spanish uh, <laughs> that I learned uh, didn't, hasn't stayed with me into my <laughs> current age, but it looks kind of it looks like it's made for children. Yes. Yes, exactly. It's for children. Yes. Um, so the idea, the main idea was to the show, the, tele, the TV show with the play. So in the places that we could uh, go, take a bus or maybe the, the places where, where a city where we live. Um, the idea was that with the show, we will offer the play also to some theaters in the city. So the people, the children will know the show and then... Um, we could go to to the stage and to perform in front of them. So, yeah, it was it was something that came together. Let's say the TV show with the with the play. And you wrote music for it as well, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that's pretty impressive. So you can write and act and sing and produce. Like you're going to be a star someday. When oh, you're, you. yeah, and and when you are, I'm like, I did an interview with her. Yeah. <laughs> And, okay. <laughs> that's good that's good i, I hope i hope I, I can be a star one day yeah 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 <laughs> at least i i think that also uh when i return i mean saying that i did some active job even if if it was a play that never was really uh, shown to the audience 
Um, I mean, it's great to say that I was in London and also with a short film, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, short film. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, we had that experience. <laughs> um what uh so what are some of the like challenges that you had when producing the play because i'm curious what mm -hmm. what were some of the obstacles that you had to overcome and how you did that well um also another thing was literally the same thing that i did with with the tv show i went to every theater that i could go to in person to offer them the play and it was really difficult to get, um, yeah, to to have a contract in the main theater, the bigger theaters. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know how it is in in Argentina, but I know here, it's quite expensive. Yeah. To produce a play, and yeah, if you want to use the theater, you need to pay the pay. You need to pay for it. Exactly, exactly. So that's why we could never go to to a main theater. I mean, we we just. We went to a lot of theaters, but we worked a lot with the government in theaters that were paid by them, in a way. Um, and lots of years we worked just, I don't know how you call it here, but we, um, when the play finished, uh, we had our hats and we, and we made people just put the money that they wanted. Oh, you did the hat going around with the hat yes. thing. Yeah, I yeah. guess. I did summer theater many, many years ago, and we did that after each performance. We somebody would have well, to go around and do the, do the yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We did that, so um, it was really good because they were really nice theaters. Um, they were national theaters, but the only thing is that um, the government paid for the theater, but we didn't have a salary, let's say. So uh, yeah, so four years we did that. We every every time that we finish with the play people just gave the money that they wanted but it was really good because it was a chance to show our our play and everything so uh, i'm curious that you also did another show that you've kind of been doing here in london um yes. musica vahrea yeah did i mispronounce that <laughs> very good very good very good uh yeah which is um yeah it's music that travels because we film artists that uh, are on the street. Um, so the show, I filmed in London, but I sent everything to Argentina. And it's a show that is about artists, musicians that play on the street. Um, some of them got interviewed. Um, so now it's being shown in my country. Uh, yeah, and there was a special from London. We have like 10 chapters about London. I mean, we, we've been to Belgium, to Spain, to Italy, uh, France. So in every chapter, you can see different places and the musicians that we found. So it's really interesting. Also, for people that um, maybe they never travel, um, so they have the possibility to see a bit of the city and also to meet the, the different musicians all over the world. Yeah, and street musicians. When you, how did you find the musicians? Was it just walking around on the streets and somebody's playing and then go yes. up and talk to them? Literally like that, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, um, actually the idea started on a trip to Europe. Um, I was in Dublin and I remember I was with my mom at that moment and, and we recorded some musicians and she said, why don't we do this, a show? And we already have the children's show. Uh, so we said, yeah, let's start a new TV show. So it was it was great. It was a great experience. And now it's being shown um, in my city in one of the main channels, so which is great. Um, I don't see the repercussions because I'm here in London, but I know that there's people that watch it. So have you ever had any problem going up to any of the people and asking them, hey, can I record you yeah. and rebroadcast this? Well, yeah, it happened to me. It happened to me that I told everyone if they were would allow us to film them. Um, but some of them, I, I mean, many of them said, no, no, I don't want to appear in the show. And, okay. <laughs> so so we didn't film them. Mm -hmm. um, some have of them, I laughed. Just, sorry, sorry, have any said that they you have to pay them or something? Well, I, I paid most of them. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. I, I always tip them. Because they were buskers, so I I tipped them. I gave them some money. 
Yeah. Oh. Even though some of did, I mean, I would say none of them asked me for money, but I, I, uh, I wanted to give them money to support them, and yeah, and someone were reluctant to give an interview, and some were really open, and it was really nice to talk to to them. Okay. So it's just kind of asking them and like, hey, if they're not into it, go on. And if they are. Yeah. Them. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. So you seem to be very heavily involved in like uh, helping others. So we've got you did a play and TV show for children. You're currently volunteering or at an internship where you're helping homeless and other kinds of stuff like that. You're doing videos of uh, buskers and stuff, people that you know are more or less yeah. working for change on the street. Uh, is this what? What got, is this like a passion of yours? Is <laughs> what's the? Well, um, I would say um, I have been going to to a church for many years, and I believe in God. And and I, I, I for me, I take it as a way also to serve God and the people. I think it's 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 um the best thing we can do to help people that are in need um and yeah i also see it as a way of of caring out and and just be helpful um so it's it's not something that i've done um many times in my life so i think now that i live in london is is the time that i'm really doing that i mean working with homeless and charities and uh, so now I'm, I'm, I do this every day and well, not now because of, of the coronavirus, but I do it every, every day. I used to do it, uh, before this, um, every day and, and, and every hour. So it was, it was great because it was my job. Um, and it was, uh, I think, um, for me, it's a, it's a very feeling experience, like for my soul. It's, it's really nice. I, I really enjoy it. And, and after I help someone, I feel like, I mean, this is the best thing I can do. If I have the possibility to help someone. Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> um, well, is there anything of yours that you want to promote that we haven't talked about? I guess I should give you a chance to, any, anything else that you want to mention before we kind of wrap our show up? Well, I think... Um, I think, well, I have my social media. If people want to follow me on Instagram, it's Lau Mobilia. Uh, if they follow me, they, they will see some of my work. <laughs> so that's L-A-U-M-O-B-I-L-I-A. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll also put a link to right. that as well as some of the other stuff we've talked about in the show notes for the podcast as well. So great, if wanna great. Look at those. Great. And then, um, of course, if they want to, we don't have many followers in our show because we, we just uploaded some videos in our YouTube channel from the Galaxy of, Dream, of Dreams in Spanish, which is La Galaxia de los Sueños. So if people want to see our, our, our videos and some music, children's music that we have, um, they can, yeah, just look for us in YouTube. Um, La Galaxia de los Sueños and they'll find some videos and, and some short things that we have from, from the play. Well, thank you, Laura, for talking with me on my uh, little mm -hmm. podcast here. I really appreciate it. Oh, and, thank you for inviting me. Really, really nice. Thank you, Milo. Mm -hmm. Well, and it was wonderful talking because, I, I mean, we've, we know each other, but not very well or yeah. anything. So I've yeah. learned so much more about you. Uh, oh, so it's so you. fascinating. You're such like a sweet and nice person. And it's like, oh, oh. man, she does nice things for other people. I'm like, ah, the hell with other people. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Milo. Yes, I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much for inviting me. Perfect. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, to the audience out there, I hope you enjoyed my talk with Laura. As always, you can let me know what you think of the show by leaving me a rating or a review wherever it is you're listening to the podcast on. And with that, I will say goodbye. Thank you and goodbye.